Good evening and welcome to Allowed at Central Library. A pleasure to see you here tonight for a discussion of Hollywood left and right. I have a distinguished panel with us here. I will be introducing them in a moment. I'm Louise Steinman, the curator for Allowed and the cultural programs director for the Library Foundation of Los Angeles, which presents all of these free Allowed programs. Some of you are members of the Library Foundation. We want to thank you very much. The Library Foundation presents over uh, almost 80, 90 uh, allowed programs a year, plus literacy programs, teen reading programs. And if you're interested in becoming a member and supporting the great work of the, li the Los Angeles Public Library, please see me or one of our staff members tonight. And if you join, we also have one of Steve Ross's books we can give you. Um, I'm sure he will sign it for you if you join at the $100 level tonight. And we really appreciate your support. It goes for a really great cause. Our format tonight, as you can see, is a panel discussion. Uh, after our panelists uh, chew this over, uh, we will open up to you for questions and we will be circulating a microphone. We ask uh, when you um, receive it to, um, and wait till you do receive it because we record for podcast, to please stand up so we can see where you are and uh, please make it a question. In fact, um, someone recently challenged our audience to see if you could make your question in eight words or less. No one has yet risen to the challenge, but feel free. Yeah, uh, no rants, please. Um, and afterwards, um, our guests, some of them, will be signing their books in the lobby courtesy of our, of our library store. So tonight we're going to uh, discuss what is Hollywood's influence on American politics. Most Americans who pay attention to politics believe Hollywood's political influence in American life and culture is heavily weighted on the left. But in his terrific new book, Hollywood Left and Right, film historian Stephen J. Ross begs to differ. He believes the evidence shows that while the Hollywood left has had the political glitz, the Hollywood right sought, won, and exercised electoral power. So overall, which side was more adept at winning the hearts and minds of Americans? Was it the Hollywood right with actors like Schwarzenegger's nearly seamless transition from action blockbusters to the governor's mansion? Or was it the Hollywood left which follows, followed Marlon Brando's observation that if actors can sell deodorant, they can sell ideas, especially when the moviegoer's political guard is down. So our panel tonight will continue and open up that conversation about the intersection of Hollywood and political activism. So our panel consists of Stephen J. Ross, who's an eminent film historian and professor of history at USC. He's written several books, including Working Class Hollywood, Silent Film and the Shaping of Class in America, which was an LA Times best book of 1998, and his new book, uh, Hollywood Left and Right, How Movie Stars Shaped American Politics, received the Academy of Motion Pictures Arts and Science Film Scholars Award, the academic equivalent of an Oscar but you don't have one for your mantle quite yet, right, Steve? No. Sorry, not yet. Okay. Mike Farrell, to Steve's left, is best known for his eight years on MASH and five seasons on Providence. He's also a writer, director, and producer, and also a well-known human rights activist. He's traveled the world for the last 30 years as part of prominent international human rights and peace delegations. He's now working to abolish the death penalty um, in our state. He helped establish the California Committee of Human Rights Watch, and his opposition to the war in Iraq resulted in his co-founding Artists United to Win Without War. And he is the author of Just Call Me Mike, two books including Just Call Me Mike, A Journey to Actor and Activist, and of Mule and Man. Roger L. Simon on our panel is the local author of 10 novels and seven screenplays, including the prize-winning Moses Wine detective series and Enemies, a love story, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award. In 2009, he published his first nonfiction book, Blacklisting Myself, Memoir of a Hollywood Apostate in, an er in, an age, in the Age of Terror, which was uh, recently republished as Turning Right at Hollywood and Vine. It's a great title, The Perils of Coming Out Conservative in Hollywood. And our distinguished moderator tonight is Ella Taylor, a wonderful film critic, a book reviewer, and feature writer. She's the author of Primetime Families, Television Culture in Postwar America. She's written for Village Voice Media. I know you've read her for years in the Los Angeles Weekly, the LA Times, Elle Magazine, and many other publications. And she was a regular uh, contributor to KPCC's LA Weekly film review show, Film Week. So please welcome our panel and take it away, Ella, Hollywood left and right. <laughs> <clears throat> so 
So um, let's actually take off from what Louise said, Steve, one of the, if not the most significant finding, then certainly one of the most significant findings of your book <clears throat> um, is that conservatives have always been a robust and I think you argue in your book perhaps more effective um, presence in, in Hollywood than the left, even though the, the popular perception of the left is as a bunch of um, commie-loving pinkos, you say that that's not the case. Right. Well, Louise knows not eight words. I can't get it under 800 words. So she <laughs> asked me to read a paragraph where I, kind of, where I lay out the um, thesis more elegantly, maybe, than I could uh, offhand. And I, it talks about <clears throat> fears about, it talks about the FBI starting the investigation of radicals in Hollywood as early as 1918. J. Edgar Hoover was, uh, had his agents trailing uh, people making radical films at the time. And such fears about radicalism in the movie industry reflect long-standing conventional wisdom that Hollywood has always been a bastion of the political left. Conventional wisdom, however, is wrong on two counts. First, Hollywood has a longer history of conservatism than liberalism. It was the Republican Party, not the Democratic Party, that established the first political beachhead in Hollywood. Second, and far more surprising, although the Hollywood right left has been more numerous and visible, the Hollywood right, led by Louis B. Mayer, George Murphy, Ronald Reagan, Charlton Heston, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, has had a greater impact on American political life. The Hollywood left has been more effective in publicizing and raising funds for various causes. But if we ask who's done more to change the American government, the answer is the Hollywood right. The Hollywood left has the political glitz, but the Hollywood right sought, won, and exercised electoral power. Uh, Roger, would you agree with that? More or less, yeah, I do. Even though I, I look, when I say I'm on the right on on economic matters, I'm not really on the right socially at all. I, as far as marriage and issues like that, I don't care if anybody marries. I can, I don't really care who I marry. So I'm, I'm, I'm completely social liberal. But, but uh, economic matters. But, 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 but coming to your point. Um, I think it's substantially true, but if you if you withdrew Ronald Reagan for the from the equation, I'm not sure it would be so true, uh, because the only one of those people who had real I mean Schwarzenegger was a second-rate governor, and, and and achieved almost nothing. Well, he was a second-rate actor. Well, so. he, I, I, I would agree. I would agree. <coughs> no, no. But Reagan was a very successful president. Uh, you may agree or not agree. I think he did some great things. He tore down that wall. And uh, so th that had, you don't think that was a great thing? Well, uh, you, th that, you You'll know. You'll have your moment. <laughs> and, uh, listen, inquiring minds may differ. But he did have, he did have a tremendous impact. I don't think the other people had quite that. So all I'm saying is I agree with you. But, but if you withdrew Reagan from that equation, it would feel different. Well, that's why you have a historian here. What I would say, Ronald Reagan would not have been Ronald Reagan without Louis B. Mayer and George Murphy. And frankly, the biggest surprise in, for me doing the research was that everything Ronald Reagan did, George Murphy did earlier. He was the true pioneer in figuring out media, how to use media, particularly television. He perfected the uh, Reagan strategy of going for blue collar, discontent blue collar Democrats in 64. And what Murphy learned, he learned from Louis B. Mayer. Uh, so there really is, Reagan was simply the best of all of them. There's no question about it. Ronald Reagan was the master performer. But his conversion to the right, which I talk about in the book from those of you who may not know his past, is. Uh, both George Murphy, who was our senator in 1964, and Reagan were liberal New Deal Democrats when they first entered Hollywood. And Murphy converted around 38 to Republican conservative. Reagan ended World War II, as he writes in his autobiography, as a bleeding heart liberal, and was in fact uh, in many of the organizations that people were blacklisted for. But for a series of reasons, he slowly began a movement from 
liberal Democrat to liberal 